Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Moreover, that we much did long to see you. The need we have to use you did provoke our hasty sending. Something have you heard of Hamlet's transformation? What it should be, more than his father's death, that thus hath put him so much from understanding of himself, we cannot dream of. I beseech you that, uh, being of such young days brought up with him, <laughs> that you vouchsafe your rest here in our court some little time, so by your companies to lead him on to pleasures, and to gather so much as by occasion you may glean, whether aught unknown to us afflicts him thus, that opened lies within our remedy. Good gentlemen, he had much talked of you. And sure I am, two men there are not living to whom he more adheres. If it will please you to show us so much gentry and goodwill as to expend your time with us a while for the supply and profit of our hope, your visitation shall receive such thanks as fits a king's remembrance. Mm. Both, your majesties, might by the sovereign power you have of us put your dread pleasures more into command than to entreaty. But we both obey, and here give up ourselves in the full bent to lay our service freely at your feet to be commanded. Thanks, Rosencrantz and gentle Guildenstern. Thanks, Guildenstern, and gentle Rosencrantz. <laughs> and I beseech you instantly to visit my too much changed son. Go, some of you, and bring me gentlemen where Hamlet is. Heavens make our presence and our practices pleasant and helpful to him. I come in. The ambassadors from Norway, my good lord, are joyfully returned. Thou still hast been the father of good news. Have I, my lord? I assure my good liege I hold my duty as I hold my soul, both to my god and to my gracious king. And I do think that I have found the very cause of Hamlet's lunacy. Oh, speak of that. That do I long to hear. A first give admittance to the ambassadors. My news shall be the fruit unto the feast. Thyself do grace to them and bring them in. He tells me, my sweet Gertrude, that he hath found the head and cause of all your son's distemper. I doubt it is no other but the main, his father's death, and our, our hasty marriage. Uh, uh, uh. We will sift him. Welcome, good friends. Say, what from our brother Norway? Most fair return of greetings and desires. He sent out to suppress his nephew's march. The which he thought proposed against the Poles, but better looked into, he truly found it was against your highness and our state. So, Fortinbras receives rebuke from him and vows before his uncle nevermore to give a say of arms against Denmark here. <laughs> <laughs> It likes us well. At night we'll feast together. Most welcome home. <laughs> this business is well ended. <laughs> My liege and madam, two weeks postulate what majesty should be, what duty is. Why, day is day, night, night, and time. It's time. <clears throat> uh, we're nothing but to waste night, day, and time. Therefore, since brevity is the soul of wit and tediousness the limbs and outward flourishes, I will be brief. Your noble son is mad. Ah! Uh mad call I it for to define true madness. What is it? But to be nothing else but mad. But let that go. More matter with less art. Madam, I swear I use no art at all. But he is mad, tis true, tis true, tis pity. And pity tis, tis true. A foolish figure, but farewell it, for I will use no art. Mad, let us grant him then. And now remains that we find out the cause of this effect. Or rather say, the cause of this defect. For this effect, defective, comes by cause. That, 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 thus it remains, and the remainder thus. I have a daughter, have while she is mine, who in her duty and obedience, Mark, hath given me this. Now, gather and surmise. To the celestial 
and my soul's idol, the most beautified Ophelia. Oh, that's an ill phrase, vile phrase. Beautified is a vile phrase. <laughs> but, 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 but you, you, you shall hear thus. In her excellent white bosom, these, etc. Came this from Hamlet to her? Good madam, stay a while, I will be faithful. Doubt thou the stars are fire, doubt that the sun doth move. Doubt truth to be a liar, but never doubt I love. This in obedience hath my daughter shown me, and more above. But how hath she received his love? What do you think of me? As of a friend, faithful and honorable. I would fain prove so, but what might you think when I had seen this hot love on the wing? As I perceived it, I must tell you that before my daughter told me. What might you, or my dear majesty, your queen here, think if I had given my heart a winking mutant arm or looked upon this love with idle sight? No, I went round to work, and my young mistress, thus I did bespeak, Lord Hamlet is a prince out of thy star, this must not be. Then I precepts gave her that she should lock herself from his resort, admit no messengers, receive no tokens, which done she took the fruits of my advice, and he, repulsed, a short tale to make, fell into a sadness, then into a fast, thence into a watch, thence into a weakness, thence into a lightness, and by this declension into the madness wherein now he raves and all we mourn for. Do you think tis this? It may be. Very like it. Hath there been such a time, I'd fain know that, that I have positively said tis so when it proved otherwise? Not that I know. Take this from this, if this be otherwise. If circumstances lead me, I will find where truth is hid, though it were hid indeed within the center. How may we try this further? Ah, uh, you know, sometimes he walks, oh, four hours together here in the lobby. So he does indeed. At such a time, I'll loose my daughter to him. Be you and I behind an arras, then mark the encounter. If he love her not, and be not from his reason fallen thereon, let me be no assistant for a state, but keep her farm and carters. We will try it. But look where sadly the poor wretch comes. Sweet Gertrude, leave us. Her father and myself, lawful espials, thus may of their encounter frankly judge, if be the affliction of his love or no, that thus he suffers for. I shall obey you. Mm -hmm. And for your part, Ophelia? Oh. I do wish that your good beauties be the happy cause of Hamlet's wildness. So shall I hope your virtues will bring him to his wonted way again, to both your honors. Madam, I wish it may. Mm. Mm. Ophelia, walk you here. Read on this book that show such an exercise 